Assalamu alaikum and peace. Before getting into this discussion, this broadcast, I just want to let you know this is a social commentary blog. I talk about many different things. Whatever's on my mind, whatever you know comes to my mind during the week, whatever I notice on social media. And I just wanted to be known that this is not a uh you know red pill channel this is not any of that is not no women hating channel this is none of that but these are things that um i've seen going on in social media and just throughout life people come to their complaints to me at my job and they ask me for advice and it's just something i notice so i just wanted to put that out there before we get into this because this is a touchy subject for the feminists out there those who have fallen into the feminist mindset they'll come at me and they'll say oh you're talking that woman hatred stuff and you must hate your mama all that stuff whatever you know i don't fear the blame of the blamers but i'm just putting it out there that this is just a social commentary blog i like to talk about all different types of topics so let's get into this in surah 30 verse 21 allah says and of his signs is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and mercy indeed in that are signs for a people who give thought you know all praise is due to allah who has given us mates that we may find tranquility in them and you know all praise is due to allah for placing between us affection and mercy yet some of us don't have these things within a marriage or some of us are not married and we want to make sure that we will have these things. Well, I have a suggestion for the sisters if you want to have a good marriage. If you want to make sure that your marriage you are looking forward to will have these things. Then a suggestion is learn when to shut your mouth. Oh, did he just say that? Yeah, I did. It needs to be said, especially today. There is an authentic hadith in which the prophet states, treat women kindly. For women were created from a bent rib, and the most crooked part of the rib is the upper part. So treat women kindly. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. There's another narration in Bukhari that states, Treat women kindly. The woman has been created from a rib. The rib is crooked, and the most crooked part of the rib is in the upper region. If you try to make it straight, you will break it, and if you leave it as, as it is, it will remain curved, so treat women kindly. Now, this doesn't mean that women are inherently evil, as the Catholic priest and many Christians used to try to say. So, you know, they stayed away from women and got into other things. This is simply letting you know the true nature of women. They are naturally crooked, as in they are more emotional, very fickle, and pretty much agents of chaos have left left to their own crookedness you know you can be offended or you can just take this in as what i'm saying and sit here and actually learn something now as the prophet said the most curved part is the upper region which means to me a woman is created from a rib all of the ribs are curved but their uppermost region is the most curved so the woman you want to go after is the woman who was less curved as possible in this day and age of feminism and mother goddess worship you have way too many upper region ribs running around here and it's even inside the muslim community of our women as well for muslims females have been majorly influenced by this culture this is another aspect of their curvedness that they are easily swayed one reason many of them will follow the dajjal the antichrist now when the prophet himself is peace be upon him is telling you that women are curved instead of trying to argue against it you should just be quiet and sit within yourself and check yourself the only way you will become a sincere believer a wise person a person who fully knows themselves is by being a hundred percent totally honest with yourself within yourself period you don't have to tell anybody what you know about yourself within yourself. Just accept it inside of yourself and know that certain things about yourself are true and certain things may not be true. 
If you're listening to this hadith and saying anything inside yourself against it, then you are not being totally honest with yourself. And that is part of your problem. Because in your mind, this hadith is about every other female except you. Let it be known, a woman's curveness isn't for you to look down upon her. It is for you to look upon her and treat her with mercy and kindness and for you to have patience when dealing with her. You know, in essence, every woman is a headache. If your woman isn't a headache to you at times, then she probably really ain't feeling you or she hasn't let her guard down totally around you. In my opinion, this curveness that women were created with is your entertainment as a man. Now, I'm not talking about those who are constant problems in your life. These are the upper region ribs. But, you know, you see it even with your uh, friends who got real, real ratchet girlfriends. And you keep wondering, why do you always keep getting these ratchet girlfriends, dog? It's because they love that. That's entertainment. They'll tell you, you know, they, they hate putting up with it. Then why do they keep getting them? Because they, they love that entertainment. They love the drama. Now, I'm, I'm talking about the women who are from the lower region of the ribs. And they have some curve to them. So they give you a headache here and there. This is your entertainment as a man, in my opinion. This keeps you on your toes and gives you something to do with regard to your woman. It keeps you from boredom and it helps to improve your character. One, by when she shows her curveness, it makes you check yourself. Am I doing anything wrong? Have I been unjust to my woman? It also improves your character by giving you good deeds because when she shows you her curveness and you handle it with patience, mercy, and love while still giving discipline, then you will increase in status in the sight of Allah. For the Prophet wasallam also said that those who treat their women the best are from the best of the Muslims. Yet, we can't let the sisters off too easily. We have to be honest and have some candor here. As I was saying, feminism has destroyed many females. It has taught many the total opposite of what the Quran and Sunnah has determined to be the roles of each gender within a marriage or relationship. The man leads and the woman follows her man's lead. Feminism is the witchcraft that has come in between marriages. You know, if you read the Quran and when those, those uh, Jews asked about the magic and they wanted to learn magic, one of the greatest forms of magic that they learned was the separation of man and man from her from his wife and wife from her husband so this is a type of witchcraft feminism has taught the woman that her man is her enemy and she should always treat him as such yet at the same time she wants a man who will lead and be a provider those two those two things conflict because you will never trust your enemy to guide you, to lead you, or to provide for you. And even if he does, you will always have suspicion of his motives and intentions, even when the majority of his actions are just, are, are just and in line with Quran and Sunnah. One thing this produces, which I want to discuss on this broadcast, is a female who can't be quiet and allow her man to lead. She can't shut her mouth and actually be guided and learn something from her husband. This is one thing that leads to divorce and a woman being alone. Feminism comes in and uses that curve in her nature against herself and against her own man. So what it becomes is double speak. She'll say, yes, I want a man to lead. But that's not what she actually means. What she actually means is, I want a man to lead whenever it is beneficial for me or makes me feel good. So every decision he makes is met with mouth and met with unnecessary questions and it's not genuine questions. It's those questions that make you question your own ability to lead or it's questions to make the simple decision you made more difficult because they really don't want to do it. Look at how the Jews treated Musa, alayhi salam. 
And this story shows how the feminist movement uses that already curved nature against the woman and her man because it creates, like I said, the thought that this is your enemy. He is not to be trust trusted. Question every single thing he says, even if it is simple. Every decision he makes needs to be first disagreed with and then maybe you'll, you'll do it. It creates obstinacy. Certain topics don't need all that negotiation or your bias. This is another reason that I think Allah talks about Musa and his situation so often in the Quran because many qualities of his people we have today. So during the time of Musa, um, Ibn Abi Hatim recorded Ubaidah uh, as Salmani saying, There was a man from among the children of Israel who was impotent. He had substantial wealth and only a nephew who would inherit from him. So his nephew killed him and moved his body at night, placing it at the doorstep of a certain man. The next morning, the nephew cried out for revenge, and the people took up their weapons and almost fought each other. The wise men among them said, Why would you kill each other while the messenger of Allah is still among you? So they went to Musa, alayhi salam, and mentioned the matter to him. And Musa said, Verily Allah commands that you slaughter a cow. They said, Do you make fun of us? Musa said, I take Allah's refuge from being among those who are foolish, who making jokes. So they said, okay, um, call upon your Lord for us that he may make plain to us what it is. He said, Allah says, verily it is a cow neither too old nor too young, but it is between the two conditions. So do what you are commanded. You see how at first Musa made it very simple. He said, slaughter a cow. But you see how they're back talking and they really, just, just keep listening. So they replied to Musa, they said, okay, Call upon your Lord for us to make plain to us its color. Musa said, Allah says, it is a yellow cow, bright in its color, pleasing the beholders. They said, the Jews, they said to Musa again, call upon your Lord for us to make plain to us what it is. Verily to us, all cows are alike. And surely if Allah wills, we will be guided. Musa said, Allah says, it is a cow neither trained to till the soil nor water the fields, sound, having no blemish in it. They said, oh, now you have brought the truth. So they slaughtered it, even though they were near to not doing it. You see, this is how many of our Muslim women are these days lost in feminine, feminism. You give a simple instruction and it becomes 101 unnecessary questions under the guise of gaining clarity. But once you boil it down, it's not really about clarity. It's just about, I really don't want to do this, so I'm going to make it difficult. And the way I'm going to make it difficult is by using my mouth to make you even question why you asked me to do it in the first place. And to make you feel foolish for even asking. As you see in the story of Musa, Musa gave them a simple instruction, sacrifice a cow. And the reason Musa wanted them to sacrifice a cow was because he was going to take a piece of the cow and place it on the dead man. And after they finally found the cow that they, they needed, he, he slaughtered the cow, put a piece of the cow on the dead man. The dead man miraculously came back to life and he exposed who had really killed him. And then he, he died again. So this was a miracle that Allah provided for them. And this is something that Musa told them to do. But at first Musa said, just slaughter a cow. It could have been any cow. But because they really didn't want to do it, because they swear they know better, because they, they don't really trust Musa, they don't really see him as a leader. Like, wait a minute, are you joking with us? See, that's how it is. So Allah has given women rights in islam and even before feminism hit allah empowered women but proving their curved nature they were trying to take an inch and turn it into a mile the men of mecca during the time of the prophet peace be upon him used to be very harsh to their women beating them harshly and the women complained to the prophet about this so the prophet forbade the men to beat the women but soon after that umar came to the prophet and said to him now 
our women are disobeying us. So Allah revealed the verses of Surah 434 that if their disrespects get too, too high, then you are allowed to, you know, eventually after doing certain steps beforehand to beat them lightly. In the tafsir of uh, Al-Faqar Al-Razi, he quoted Al-Shafi about the noting that the society of Medina were gentler towards women. Umar ibn al-Khattab said that we the kin of Quraysh, our men used to possess our women. Then we came to Medina and found that their women were possessing their men. Then our women mixed with their women and our women became bold and disobedient. So these two societies in this regard were of two extremes. On one hand, the men of Mecca were were way too harsh in dealing with the curved nature of women. And on the other hand, the men of Medina were way too loose in dealing with the curved nature of women to the point where the women ran the show, similar to what we have now. You know, and that's what we call the simps of today. The simps are the ones who just don't care what they women do. Or you, you could call them day youth as well, as the prophet called them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They don't care what they women do. They can go and come as they please, dress however they want, speak to them however they want, run the relationship. These are the, the simps of society. And you see how Umar is saying, you know, what I'm saying, that when the nature of too much looseness in dealing with women comes in to contact with the women who are under control of their men, and in this case, you know, they were too harsh, but just give you an example. Um, when they come into contact with women who are under control, those women who are have too much looseness, your women will become disobedient. Them gums gonna start bumping. And this is what we see. So Allah sent down the verses to deal with both sides of the issue in a just manner. Now, let it be known that the prophet, peace be upon him, never beat any of his women. So this is the sunnah we should take after. None of us should hit our women. If it, be, if it comes to a point to where a woman is so disrespectful to you and so disobedient that you feel you would have to put hands on her, then it's just best to leave that woman alone. She's letting you know that she is a disciplinary problem that you really don't need. But I'm using this verse and the reasonings behind the revelations to show my point that too much freedom in a society, i.e. feminism, has caused the woman to give more lip to her man. This is something a woman has to control to have a peaceful relationship with her husband. Learning when to keep your mouth shut. This doesn't mean that if you have a genuine question or genuine advice, you don't say it. This just means, you know, pause, be silent and reflect on the words that will be coming out of your own mouth. Because many times you will speak on emotion and programming without even thinking and then be like, damn, why did I say that? A lot of times, these type of knee-jerk responses, emotional responses you give to your man come from a place of, I know better than him, or I'm the smartest in the room, or I should be the one leading, not him. We, we both should be leading, not just him. Let me prove how wrong he is so he can see that he shouldn't be leading. That's something you have to stop. That's only causing unnecessary problems. You're not the leader. Accept that. If you have anything of actual value to give or of actual substance to give, then yes, speak respectfully your points. But just bumping your gum just because I have a mouth and I'm going to say what I want and you're not going to tell me nothing, that's a major problem. When you're speaking from that place of I'm smarter or I know better, you know, even if you do, and you're not coming at it in a humble manner or respectful manner. This is the same mistake that Musa did. And this is why Allah made him go find Al-Khidr. If you look at the sto story of Al-Khidr and Musa, ladies, put yourself in the shoes of Musa and put your man in the spot of Al-Khidr. I'm going to break it down. But you can find this story in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. And when, when I break it down, you'll see what I mean. So one day Musa gave an amazing sermon and someone stood up and asked, Oh Musa, is there anyone who was more learned than you? 
Musa said, no. See, this was a mistake he made and a mistake many sisters fall into and men as well, where they will say, I know better than him. Why is he leading? Instead of being humble, Musa made a mistake. Some, the same way women should be humble and let their men lead. So, you know, Allah told Musa, nah, there's someone who was more knowledgeable than you, and I want you to go find him. And ain't that what y'all sisters want? Y'all want to find a good man, right? So Musa finds out Khidr, just like y'all. Y'all finally find a good man. And Musa says to him, hey, I want to follow you, and, and I want to learn from you. Just like many of y'all claim you want to follow a man's lead and he teach you things and provide for you, etc. And Al Khidr, Al Khidr tells him straight up that, hey, man, you won't be able to be patient with me. Just like your potential husband asks you, will you be able to handle being submissive and following me? Musa alayhi salam was like, nah, nah, trust me, you, you will find me patient if Allah wills. And y'all say the same. So Khidr says, okay, well, don't say anything to me about anything until I tell you about it and until I break it down to you. And your man, your husband, he says, okay, let's go on this journey of marriage together and I will lead. This is how I will run my show and I will break down to you knowledge of what's going on. Play your position. So at every time at you know, Al Khidr makes a decision based on the knowledge of more knowledge and wisdom that Allah bestowed on him. Musa interjects, hey, 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 what are you doing? Musa interjects with what he thinks is better. But he's supposed to be following and learning. Same way with the sisters. Your man makes a decision based on the foresight that Allah has given him, and you're interjecting unnecessarily every single time. And each time, you know, Al Khidr tells him, Hey, remember I told you, be quiet or we just we can't keep going. And that's what your man tells you. He keeps reprimanding you. And so finally Khidr says, Look, man, this is where we part. So your man done put up with your mouth for years and years, and he's finally like, Look, this is where we part. And Khidr finally breaks down to him the wisdom behind his actions. And the prophet, after telling this story, says, if Musa would have had more patience, we would have learned way more from Al Khidr. Same with you sisters. A righteous man is there to teach, guide, and provide and protect. So listen up and don't be so quick with the retorts. The prophet told us about how women can use their mouths in the wrong way. Uh, Ibn Abbas narrated a hadith and this is in Bukhari, that the prophet said, I was shown the hellfire and that the majority of its dwellers were women who were ungrateful. And the women asked him, did they disbelieve in Allah or were they ungrateful to Allah? He replied, they were ungrateful to their husbands and are ungrateful for their favors and the good deeds done to them. If you have always been good to one of them and then she sees something in you not of her liking, she will say, I have never received any good from you. It sounds like some things people say today, right? So in conclusion, I call on the sisters to control their tongues and to allow their husbands and men of their lives to lead. As long as he's being just and leading you to what is good in this life and the next, there is no need for constant disagreement or constantly having something to say back. This will only lead to divorce eventually if it is not tamed. Because a man who spends of his earnings that Allah has given him to support you will not put up with it after a while. And he may say to you the words Al Khidr said to Musa, This is where we part. Peace and Assalamu Alaikum.